many things beyond our ken. Hidden facets of our primitive past, only lightly disguised by the veneer of civilization. Last Valpurgis Eve, the night when demons walk abroad, as the forlorn moon rode across the pitted industrial sky, it cast jaundiced illumination onto a weed-choked mound of damp earth that marks the final resting place of Albert Shovelbottom. <laughs> the last of the Barnsley Draconis. <laughs> it was in 1938 in Grimethorpe in a chip shop that Albert was killed by a piece of steel-tipped, silver-tipped tripe and a sliver of deep frozen black pudding <laughs> thrust through his waistcoat. His fangs were pulled by a dentist who stood six foot four, never smoked, never drank, and made all his own frocks. <laughs> and his fangs were made into pickle forks for a staff dinner at the UCP. <laughs> to all intents and purposes, the horror that had been Albert was forgotten until that fateful witch's Sabbath when a recently adopted tomcat, who was feeling very light-headed, <laughs> apparently the vet was short-sighted, <laughs> chased a wind-blown kipper bone onto the grave of Albert, where it began to meow in a high-pitched fashion, telling the other cats of his operation. <laughs> that hapless creature failed to notice a dirt-crusted hand that rose from the soil, grasped it by the gullet, and although Albert had no teeth, he gave that cat a hell of a suck. <laughs> the head of Albert rose, and soon the horror that was forgotten now became part of the present. He brushed the clay off his bowler hat, took a pinch of snuff, and tottered to the Doncaster bypass. <laughs> On the way, he drained two cyclists to pension and got breathalyzed. <laughs> he lurched into a pub that was known locally as Twiggy's Chest. <laughs> Mainly because the beer was flat and warm. <laughs> the thing stood at the bar and ate a packet of cashews. And a man came up and asked Albert to join the local cricket team. It was understandable because he had the makings of a first-class bat. <laughs> and then, by a strange quirk of fate, the landlady fell in love with him. Her name was Agnes. She was seven foot three, she was thin, she had red hair, and was known locally as the Towering Inferno. <laughs> she had many things that men admire, muscles and a dueling scar. <laughs> she was so cross-eyed when she cried, the tears ran down her back. The bags under her eyes were so big, you got the impression her nose was playing the piano. <laughs> and she was so bowling that she ironed her drawers and a boomerang. <laughs> and she fell in love with Albert. She didn't mind that he was a vampire. She did many things for him. She bought him a two-door coffin with automatic soil change. <laughs> and she made him a director of a cash and carry blood bank. Oh, it was a nuisance. He used to hang around her neck and stick her for the drinks. But she didn't mind. <laughs> then Albert went on the wagon, because anemia was the big disease at that time in Barnsley. And he used to hang from the standard lamp, bemoaning his fate. Till one night, just after November, as the mist rose slowly, like dry rot in a new house. <laughs> And I've got one, the front door's always open, I can't shut the damn thing. <laughs> Two midgets from a circus came in for a packet of crisps. And Albert went, ooh! <laughs> Can I have them? And his wife said, no, you can't. He said, why not? She said, you get bloody nasty when you drink shots. <laughs> Good
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Old Faces, the programme in which we introduce people who've been around for a long time and who haven't made it. So let's introduce our latest searcher for stardom. He's got exactly two minutes to impress his personality on us and show us something a little different in the musical manner. So here he is, one of Todmorden's best-known wine waiters, Godfrey Gould. <laughs> Push your long-haired lout! Ah! Oh! Oh, come here, dear. Oh, come here, never see a soul. Godfrey Gould of Todd. <laughs> well, now let's see what the panel thought of that. First of all, stamina. One. 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 Uh, breathing. Uh, two. Uh, one. Just. <laughs> no. Life expectancy? <laughs> no! Oh. There are many degrees of music. Tonight we have with us three degrees of music who could tilt me on my axis any time. <laughs> Here they are singing a medley of their hits. Ladies and gentlemen, the three degrees! <laughs> Yeah. 
Mr. Merripepper. Uh, Mr. Oh. Mr. Merripepper. What is it, old love? You're a nice looking woman. No, Mr. Merripepper, you're supposed to be at the wedding. You're only the bride's father. Do pull yourself together. We must sober you up. The bride, your daughter, is I waiting. Am... You're supposed to be proposing the toast. You could hardly speak, man. What do you speak? I could hardly mean. <laughs> You can't even string your words together. Oh, Dolly Mush and Cocky Pop. <laughs> I'm Pern Worthing. I very much fear you're intoxicated, man. Hold fast, cleric. Ooh, what's your language in front of this barman? You're. I, I'm. What? I, what? Me intoxicated? Oh, never, never in your Nelly. Oh, no, you're positively pistic. <laughs> I most certainly am so. I got that one right, but I got that one right. Hey, have a drink. Here's mud in your bum. Fresh air. That'll do it. Oh, it's a good air. horse, good horse, that one. I can't, I can't possibly take him out into the street. A man of the cloth? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Mary Pepper, uh, excuse me. What do you mean? Excuse me, barman. Have you a little back passage? <laughs> I'd like to apologise for my friend in discretion. <laughs> very personal matter. Mr. Mary Pepper, put your arm round me. Let me walk you up and down in here and try and so. I would want you a bit of a do. Certainly not, Mr. Mary Pepper. I've stopped a few from going sour. Oh, come along, Mr. You come here, oh, oh. You're a grand looking woman. Oh. oh, do pull yourself together, you're cracking. You're not so bad yourself, do you? Oh. Where the hell she gone? Where are you, my beauty? Come here, oh. I don't, don't move, don't move. Don't think I've ever seen anyone quite so drunk. Why? <laughs> Why, go me take a liberty. Ooh. You can drop any chest you like, <laughs> if you so desire it. <laughs> you may take a sample of my blood, <laughs> but I warn you, monk. <laughs> it won't be an easy job, because I'm a tricky bleeder. <laughs> Between his knees. Oh, what a good idea, Oscar. You hum it out for you. <laughs> Come along, Mr. Merry Pepper. Put your head between your knees. If I thought it was that sort of party, I'll come earlier. Oh. <laughs> Come along now. Head between the knees. Oh, don't get excited. No. <laughs> Put your head between your knees. It's a game, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. We've got to sober you up. You're head... with a puzzle. Oh. Come along now. Head between oh. the knees. Oh. Oh. <laughs> your knees, Mr. Merry Pepper. You carry your Bible very low. Thing here. Self praise is no recommendation. <laughs> Not in my cure Angostura bitters, ferny branca, one raw hey. egg, a dash of paprika, and a spoonful of vinegar. <laughs> Ow! Oh, Mr. Who, who? Mr. Merry Pepper. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You've spoiled your daughter's great day. How far from You've me, spoiled country. everything for your wife, your daughter, for me. You're a filthy mess. No, irresponsible oaf, a selfish Alicent. boor, and a drunken fox. Well, that's very nice of you, but flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> However, I accept your apology. <laughs> I'm thoroughly ashamed of you, Mr. Mary Pepper. I have married off six of your charming daughters. Six. My word, the good Lord certainly smiled on you. <laughs> smiled? Smiled? <laughs> A bloody good laugh. <laughs> Thank you.
excuse me. What? But why were you turning from left to right when we were all turning from right to left? I come in late. <laughs> So, any road, who went out to eat last night, then? Who was that nosy bitch, isn't it, from number three, Mrs uh, Morrison? Uh, <laughs> yes, we did, as a matter of fact, went to that new place beyond the brick kilns. <laughs> oh, you mean the hunting lodge. <laughs> Very nice. We walked in, and they must have known we were clients. <laughs> Took me coat, never even gave me a ticket. Oh. <laughs> Mind you, they lost the bloody thing. <laughs> It, uh, was it a nice meal? Very nice. My bird ordered the Ellsby duckling. Oh, yes. He's fond of a bit of duck, your bird. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the waiter brought it. My bird did his celebrated finger test. <laughs> what do you mean, his celebrated finger test? Well, this is strictly between you and I. Ooh, my lips are sealed. <laughs> I know I couldn't, I couldn't tell anybody else this. But what he does... He sticks his finger <laughs> up the parson's nose <laughs> and he whittles it about. What does he do that for? My bird has always stoutly maintained that by sticking his finger up the... <laughs> and he can tell where the bird comes from. The waiter brought this bird. My bird put his finger up the... He said, he, lad, he said this bird never were Aylesbury. Told him straight, you know, looked him straight in the eye. He's like that, you know, mm. right the nose. Oh, no, no. He said this bird was probably reared on the slopes in the heather. <laughs> near the windswept flint stone rocks of East Derbyshire, near the limestone ridge. Well, go to the bottom of our street. What did the waiter do? What could he say? My bird's a gastric expert. <laughs> so we took it back. Half an hour and two bottles of Spanish satin later. <laughs> he brought another duck. Bert put his finger up the... He said, hey, lad, he said, this bird is never indigenous to Aylesbury. He said, in my opinion, that bird were a Dewsbury mallard. <laughs> crossed with a Hebridean widgeon. He said, if that's an Aylesbury duck, he said, I'm Alan Wilson's tobacco pouch. <laughs> yes, he always was witty. Oh, he's always been a wag. Man, he's big maid as well. Anyway! <laughs> he made him check it back, you know. Again? Yes. Oh, he did. He doesn't care, my Bert, you know. No, no. Anyway, there was another duck. Well, my Bert put his finger up the arse, nose, <laughs> and his little face lit up. He said, oh, he said, that's definitely an Ellsbury duck. Oh, oh bless him. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Well, he, he cleaned his plate. They want to pick on the bones, you know. Yeah. Not a pick when it finished. Yeah. Anyway, he for the chef. He never. Oh, he does. You see, if he's enjoyed something, he likes people to know it. Yes, I always did like to attract attention. <laughs> he used to send me a card from time to time. Anyway, what he... <laughs> The chef came out and my bird said that were lovely, that were a real Aylesbury duck. Oh. He said, where did you learn your trade? You know how he is. And the way it went, the chef went out, oh, it went marvellous, you know, and my bird said, what part of the country do you come from? And what did he say? Go on, the expert, you tell me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my favourite lady singer, Miss Cleo Lane. Be the 
For, by the way. What sousaphone? This sousaphone. I thought it was at the left luggage. <laughs> no, no, as a matter of fact, I, I'm wearing this, Cleo, for you because I'm trying to prove rather desperately that I'm not just a body poltroon, an incipient mountebank. <laughs> an incipient what? Mountebank. Oh. That's where the Canadian police keep the money. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, I, I'm wearing this to prove that music is in my soul. It burns my every fiber. It pulses in my blood. It pounds in my heart. To sum it up, it's bloody painful. <laughs> By the way, uh, who's that badly designed crane of a fella that's with you? It's John Dankworth. Oh, him with the flute. Yeah. Oh, oh. I was just going to say because, quite frankly, I think he's holding you back. He's not good for you, you know. You see, he's holding you back with all this sort of, you know, this. Free Bob de Boo Bat Boogie Woogie stuff. You see, he's old fashioned, he's untalented. He's my husband. A hell of a nice fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, else, you? why don't you sing some of that music without words? You know, that stuff you do so very well. Uh, skit singing. Oh, you need scat singing? Yeah, some of that as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, if you play your cards right, you and I could become another great double act. <laughs> Betty Grable and Jimmy James, eh? Why don't you, for why, why don't you forget that Johnny Pankhurst? Don't work. You're welcome. I didn't know you spoke German. Okay. You know he's behind you. No, but you haven't now, Fanny. <laughs> we can't all be professional, go on. Yeah, I haven't played yet. You can help, baby. <laughs> I sound like French plumbing, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> now, what do you think of that, see? Oh, hey? unbelievable. Oh, thank... Oh, oh, hello. I was uh, just saying, uh, telling Cleo here... Chloe! Oh, I was just telling... Uh, <laughs> just telling Chloe that her and I could move in a new direction. 
Well, why don't you go on now and we'll follow you on in a minute. Not you, <laughs> Chloe and I. You see, <laughs> this is a breakthrough. Oh, it's more like a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, you poltroon! Why are you ever quitting Jack and Hips? You hand off the fact that the MU is endorsed your card. <laughs> you leader of a knuckle shark band, how dare you? I know I'm a pioneer, but one day, Chloe Cleo, the two of you will come going to me. And then you'll see what'll happen or when the say. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> but what shall we do now? Oh, please don't talk about him now he's gone. No, please don't talk about me when they're gone, or when I'm gone. My, isn't that just a cue for a song? <laughs> we may encounter. Now, as you know, there's only five of us with limited resources against the full might of the Hun. For code and purposes, we will be known as bloody mugs. <laughs> now then, personnel. I am your commanding officer, squadron leader, Lovett Knightley. 
Oh, shut up, Dorothy. <laughs> cool your ardour. Over there we have Flight Sergeant Mad Micklethwaite. Uh, <laughs> how do you do? You're a wireless operator. <laughs> you will keep in liaison with him. He will be giving you constant progress reports. Uh, if you don't mind waiting. <laughs> And here we have Flying Officer Harry Prangus Cartwright. Hello. He's our intelligence officer. And this is WAF Dorothy Potts. My personal mechanic. Who will be from time to time servicing my kite. Hello, boys. Bang on, Dorothy. <laughs> How's the uh, servicing going, love? All right, Poochie, but does that thing that spins round go in the front of the plane? I'm damned if I know. <laughs> but don't worry, you're doing a splendid job. Keep up the good work. <laughs> and last but not least, Flying Officer Bobber Wilkins. <laughs> Dear so and bah. <laughs> Undercover man. Nice to see you, Wilkins. Code name Mint Sauce. <laughs> now he will be doing little things on his own in the field. <laughs> now then, our first mission is a jaunt over Berlin. Is that the one in Germany? <laughs> Got it in one cart, right? Any questions, Wilkins? No, right. For security reasons, this will be known as. Operation Fiasco. Poochie, there's a letter missing. Yes, I know, Dorothy. I haven't got time to go for a pee. Shut <laughs> 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 it up. Now, where was I? It's me, me. Yes, well, get... It's me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I smoke. You may, if you get shot down. <laughs> I love your nose, Poochie. Oh, it's rather nice of you, Dorothy. See me with the other angers. <laughs> now, the target. <laughs> Germany. But that's Skagness. <laughs> I know damn well it's Skagness, Dorothy, but there's a war on. <laughs> You'll just have to pretend. Last time he was there, he got fleeced. Now then. <laughs> You'll cross the coast. At Lubeck, or Woolworths, as it says it here. <laughs> Look out for heavy flak over the floral arcade and the potage mince meter at North Shore. Now you'll shed your load. <laughs> you never let me down, Wilkin. Between the right stag and butlins. Oh dear, why are we bobbing butlins? We're not bobbing butlins, you fat in Berlin! You have to use your imagination. Oh. Now then, if you get captured by the Germans, always remember, just say your name, rank, serial number, and hello, sailor. <laughs> you never know your luck. Now, survival items. A phrase book. Some good news and some bad news. First, the good news. It is a phrase book. Now the bad news. It's Italian Swahili. <laughs> well, there is here a very useful phrase you may find of immense value. on the runway. <laughs> the signal to start is a single red ball <laughs> hoisted to the top of the mast. Now, when a second red ball is hoisted, Mithelweight here will give the signal another ball's up. <laughs> Carry on the good work.
the traditions of Britain. This week we present the Staley Bridge Needle Dance. number I'd like to try something a little different. I'm sure you all know and love Cole Porter as much as I do but have you ever wondered what it would be like if he had written something for Hello? Hello? Do you want anything? <laughs> Singer extraordinaire, an international chansousi. In a way, yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm Cosmo Smallpiece, one of the gods. Beg your pardon? G O D S, the Gas Dang Operatic Dramatic Society. <laughs> and do you want me to help you? Could do for you. Well, you see, I make my debut very shortly at the Apocalypse Hall Ghoul. <laughs> and I've always admired your vocal pyrotechnics. And I was hoping, if I may be so bold, to ask you if you'd coach me in your inevitable style. How oh, very flattering. <laughs> do you mean you want me to take you in hand? <laughs> <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> always, 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 always. <laughs> always remember the voice starts here, comes up through the chest and out through the lap. Get the lot out, get the lot out. Do it again, do it again. Starts here, here, up through the chest and out through the lap. 
the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to do it for you? Oh! oh. <laughs> you do it for me? Oh, my little chicken girl. Start here. Oh. Deep breath. Up through oh. the chest. Little fingers, little and fingers. Out through the lounge. Oh. Oh. Well, I demonstrate now. Oh. Right, watch carefully. Oh, I can't take my eyes off it. Oh. Oh. Deep breath, big breath. Oh. Oh. Now you do it. <laughs> Thank you, mother. Deep breath. Oh, big breaths. <laughs> big breath. <laughs> no, deep, no, deep. Oh. It's coming up, it's coming up. Your solo was next Tuesday. Yes. Why don't you try something now? Hmm? Do you know I love all of you? <laughs> you don't mean that. The song by Cole Porter. Oh. Well, I was going to sing it. There's the orchestra over there. Here's the music. Why don't you sing it now? Now? Yes. Then afterwards, I'll go over all your outstanding things <laughs> and deal with your shortcomings. There won't later. be any! There won't be any! You clap it! Ooh, get stuck in! Nickel's knocking! Nickel's knocking! Oh, oh, oh. sensational tour of Saudi Arabian silage pits, and immediately prior to his summer season at the Tin Miners Welfare Hostel Polpero, that incredible aerial acrobat, that Yehudi menuet of the high wire, the lord of levitation, the eighth wonder of the age, the one and only Great Dorse Pony! and sort it out. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, we appear to have a slight technical hitch. Harry, do it! But the great door Sony will be ready in a moment. Harry, I'm stuck! To entertain you with his sophisticated skills and arts. He's not in the bloody yeah. pub again, is he? Check the sprocket! He will be presenting his famous act which has crowned heads throughout Europe. <laughs> For God's sake, call your family, it's cooking into me! <laughs> Are you ready? Are my hours like? <laughs> well, 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 we do seem to have the gremlins with us tonight. But the great Dorsoni is sorting it out. Come here, Paddy! The great Dorsoni has gypsy blood in his veins. You'll have gypsy blood all over you in a minute. What's the matter? Is your head hurting? You've got a lousy sense of direction. I tell you what, I'll go and see if I can sort it out. You just hang on. I wouldn't think about going anywhere. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's very nice to be up here in Leeds. <laughs> I hope we don't have to keep you in suspense much longer. Anyway, this honeymoon couple were on holiday and they had this, this hotel. They had a, a view of the groin at Rill. <laughs> and the, it was £15 a week and used to crew it. And they were up in the bedroom. <laughs> They were in the bedroom and he said to her, he said, I'm very worried. And she said, what's the matter? And he replied, I've cracked. Oh, you've heard it. <laughs> no, 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 I, I found a solution to the problem. Glue? No, 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 no. You do the piano bit first. What? You can play the piano. Well, of course I can play the piano. It's just one small point. 
How do we reach the damn thing? Where have you gone? Where have you gone? <laughs> There's no problem. There's no problem. We'll hire it. What do you mean you'll hire? You've had everything else. No, look, we've put the piano on wires. We did it as a precaution in case you got stuck. Well, that's bloody ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not likely to get stuck, am I? Well, you are stuck. <laughs> it wasn't bloody likely, though, was it? <laughs> you leave it to me. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> up the piano forte! Altitude is no good for pianos. Sherpa Tensing, one of the nicest little fellas ever to wipe his nose with a pair of goggles. <laughs> Will you look at me when I'm talking to you? <laughs> Said to me that while he was doing a Winifred Atwood melody on South Cole while doing cabaret on Camp 3 for the lads, the piano seized up, the lid fell down and severely shortened his climbing career. Yes, <laughs> It's not doing me any good either. Well, <laughs> we've anticipated that as well. You see, we've got a tuna on a wire. A fish. <laughs> How the hell can a fish play the piano? <laughs> Listen, you. <laughs> Steve Austin, astronaut. Listen. <laughs> What's your fish going to play on that piano, eh? Hate, rattle and roll. <laughs> the impossible bream. I wish I could shimmy like my sister skate. Sun, no doubt, by Sardine Martin, canned as usual. Oh, I think I'm free. Oh, I can feel movement. Believe me, that's a relief. Right, I think we've done it. Ladies and gentlemen, at the piano, the great Dorsoni. the golden shot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the piano 40, the great Dorsoni! <laughs> Thank you, wonderful friends. Tonight, if I may, I would like to play for you, if I may, for the first time in midair, I usually play by ear. <laughs> Chopin's Immortal Polynesian.